Growing up back then, they just want you to be a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, you know, because football wasn't a profession. I remember when, in, when growing up in the ghetto, my dad, you know, uh, got a painter, was painting his house, and I came, you know, after playing football outside, we came down, I started hitting the wall with the ball, kicking, and then the slap I got from my back of my head, <laughs> I was 12. And I told him, this ball that I'm playing, I'll build a house for you. We grew up in the ghetto. This we live extended. You know, you have one million and one kids that you are all friends. You have one million and one houses, one million and one family that everybody in each house is your father, your mother, your senior brother. That's how we grew up. The, the love of football is, is on the street. You know, it's what we do every day. You know, you wake up in the morning, walk into school, you play football. You get to school, you play football. On the breaks, you play football. Walking back from school, you play football. And then you have the community club, of course that uh, you, know, you meet every day you are playing street by street. You know, sometimes it's one street, but the far end has a team, the down, you know, the lower aspect that we have, have a team. And, and from there, you can see the quality, the quality of everybody. It's competitive back then. You, know, you pick a ball, you juggle five times, I have to juggle six times. It drops, you juggle seven, I have to juggle eight. You, know, you do a skill, I must do it. You know, that competition, you know, makes, makes, I think, that generation, you know, to be the best generation that Nigeria has ever seen. I remember my first walk to a stadium. You know, I don't know what the stadium is. You know, a friend of mine, he's late now, he's like a brother, you know, told, ah, let's go watch football. You know, we walked for about five kilometers, you know, uh, you know, plugging mangoes along the way till we got to the stadium. It was raining, the, you know, the rain beat the hell out of us. And when we got to the stadium and, you know, it was raining, so we jumped over the fence. He went first, then he pulled me. And when we just landed and he said, oh, it's 2-0 already. And I said, what the hell do you mean 2-0? We just got here. How do you know it was 2-0? Came out, Kachinya, Rugaichan 2-0. And that was the first time I knew that was a scoreboard, you know. And I looked and I, oh, okay. And he said, whenever they score, they put it there. And I said, ah, okay. And I can never forget that day because it was Bendel Insurance and DICBs. The first day I saw Terila Okoronta, the first day I saw Temile, and then I just got home and I said, my nickname is Terila Okoronta, <laughs> you know? And then they started calling me Okoronta, Okoronta, but I thought like, games was like every day. And then it fell out. It was on a Monday and uh, I walked from school. I jumped the fence again and it was UNTL, uh, UNTL uh, KTL. UNTL beat uh, KTL 13-0. And that was the first day I saw Rashid Yakini. And he scored nine goals by himself. And I fell in love with Rashid Yakini. When people, you know, make allegation that uh, Daniel Mamokachi was one of those that you know, refused to allow Rashid Akini shine in the 94 World Cup, that they don't give him passes and all that stuff. And I said, what the hell? You know, they, they don't know how I idolize, you know, the gangling, you know, for them to be making, you know, shady, you know, uh, remarks like that. It, it hurts me a lot. I had a good relationship with the, with the Abacha family. You know, uh, I'm like a son because of the military background that we have. About three days before, before the first game, uh, we lost the general. Two days later, I got injured, you know, on training, you know, uh, got a tackle and my knee locked. And that was the beginning, I think, of the beginning of, of everything for me. I just walked quietly into the locker room, was in the, was in the toilet for 
I don't know how long I was crying like a baby and all that till they finished warmed up and they came and I said I'm out and uh, Fanny Amun and told the other coaches they came they knocked and I told them no they should let me be when I'm ready I can it was one of the worst World Cups that we had in my in my time they were expecting that okay everything of course is, it doesn't it will be okay but after one season I wasn't feeling too well went under the knives again now we have to go to Germany what they did wasn't supposed to be what they should have done but as fate that is just how it's been written and and then it happened that surgery will make me to stop playing football definitely not you know uh, if you uh, you see people players that get injured you know they have surgery then rehab and they start playing again and that was what it was in, it was in my head I, you know uh, you know the rehab 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 started training playing but I was it wasn't it wasn't the bull you know it wasn't the bull maybe I feel I was you know but people that are watching me knew it wasn't me because my fo- my, my my style of play is about power speed and a bit of skills you know if that speed is not there if that strength is not there then it's a mouse not the bull <laughs> you know and I felt it a lot of my friends and a lot of people said if if it happened to a lot then a lot of people will have gone mad and you know me doing rehab and thinking that I will never play football again and all that stuff you know it, I think it just it's just a special grace you know we go through phases you know you wake up after when that period was going through did I go through bankruptcy yes I did I, I don't feel ashamed to say it you know, it, it, we go through experience and all that. You know, I'm, do I have millions in my account today? No, because I don't need it. You know, because I've, I've always have in my head that, okay, the more money I make, the more people you can help. The more money you make, the more people can benefit from it. Because you wake up one day and you are just history. <laughs>